Transmission electron microscopy is a topic of today's discussion in characterization of materials. Uh, transmission electron microscopy is much more critical and sophisticated equipment. Um, if you compare it with the scanning electron microscopy, the scanning electron microscopy at minimum it can reach to nearly 2 Armstrong um, The working principle and construction of transmission electron microscopy is summarized in this slide. So the main parts of uh, transmission electron microscopy are the electron gun and series of lenses such as condenser lens, objective lens, intermediate lens and projector lens. Also there are other parts such as stigmators and apertures. So let's start from the top. The top is uh, include the electron gun where electrons are electron beam is generated and transmitted and then this um, beam of electron first pass by the electron uh, gun deflector and once this uh, beam is passed through the gun deflector then it comes the condenser aperture number one after that the beam of electron it passed through the condenser lens one and two Whereas in between condenser lens 1 and 2, there is a fixed aperture and the condenser stigmata. Later in the middle portion of the transmission electron microscopy, there are lenses named as objective lens upper, objective lens lower. Before these two lenses, there is a objective stigmata and condenser aperture number 2. So once the beam of electron passes through the objective lens, then it comes the objective aperture and selected area aperture, where image deflectors deflect this beam of electron toward the uh, intermediate lens. After intermediate lens, the beam of electron, it passes through the diffraction stigmata and then through projector lens one and projector lens two, the beam is focused on viewing screen where you can see the object um, uh, object of um, uh, object of interest the other option to view this object of interest is by the ccd camera on your um, ccd lcd or led screen so both the options are available so either you can view the object on the viewing screen or by the CCD camera on your LCD or LED, uh, LED screen. The complex construction of uh, transmission electron microscopy is um, simplified in the form of schematic diagram and shown here on the right hand side. So the sample is a form of thin slice is placed between the condenser and objective lens. If the sample is thick, then the beam of electron generated by the gun will not pass by the sample and you will not get any type of image. So it's very important that the sample that placed in, in between the condenser and the objective lens shall be a thin slice. Uh, there are specified um, specific modules where you can um, cut, dice and polish this um, the thick samples to the thinner samples uh, so that it can be placed inside the transmission electron microscopy. So let's start from the top. The electron gun transmits uh, the generated electron beam and then this generated beam is passed through the condenser lens and condenser aperture towards the sample. After passing by the sample, this beam is gone through the objective lens and objective aperture. The very last part is the projector lens and then uh, the beam is um, focused on this screen or CCD camera by this projector lens so that you can view the object of interest. Now part by part we will explore major components of the TEM. So the first part is the electron source or electron gun. Basically there's a V-shaped filament made of, of uh, LAB6 or tungsten and due to the negative potential of electrode, the electrons are emitted from the small area of filament. 
Normally, a point source is much important because it emits monochromatic electrons, which means electron with similar energy. To isolate electron, we need a positive plate, also known as anode plate. So by this uh, means, because as you know, positive charge, um, positive charge attracts the negative charge. Electrons are the negative charge species, whereas positive charge plate it attracts the electron. So by this means, electrons are accelerated. Um, and they are passed to the anode plate with much higher speed. Next part is the condenser lens. So the condenser lens, the stream of electrons from the electron gun is then focused to a small thin coherent beam by use of condenser lens. So this is the electromagnetic lens and uh, the condenser lens normally determine the spot size. This is very much similar to the scanning electron microscopy. So if you remember the condenser lens in scanning electron microscopy, uh, it has the function to determine the spot size. So similar to the SEM here in condenser lens, the, the function of condenser lens is to determine the spot size or to control the spot size. Next comes the condenser aperture. So it's a thin strip um, with a small circular holes of various sizes. So the purpose of this condenser aperture is to restrict the electron beam and filter out unwanted scattered electron before the image formation or before passing through the sample. Once the electron beam passed through the condenser aperture, then it interferes with the thin slice of sample. At there, the electron sample interaction takes place in three different ways. The first one is the transmitted beam. Electron pass through the sample unscatteredly. Or the electrons are deflected either by elastic or inelastically. The transmitted beam through the sample is passed through the objective lens and the function of objective lens is to focus the transmitted electron from the sample to the image. So the function of objective lens in case of TEM is very much similar to the scanning electron microscopy and the function is to focus the beam. After objective lens, the beam of electron they pass through the objective aperture to enhance the contrast by blocking out the high angle uh, diffracted electrons. The selected aperture um, usually enables the user to examine the periodic diffraction of electron by order arrangement of atoms. Then comes the projector lens and the projector lens are used to expand the beam on the phosphor screen or CCD camera.